If you want this life to perform at its highest level, purification is needed. Twice a month doing this and doing the regular practices, whatever you're doing, uh, will ensure body is clean. So if your chemistry is not clean, then initially it's a question of unhappiness, later on it's a question of ill health. The five aspects of inner engineering, this is a simple way of staying blissful. So, especially those of you who are aspiring for spiritual growth, you need a good mechanism. A good mechanism means least amount of friction, least amount of friction. Nothing has gathered, everything is clean. Now this functions smooth and easy. Whatever we want to do with this, it becomes easy to do that. But today, in many ways, in thought, emotion, even verbal purity is not there, this is called vakshuddhi where a huge importance was given in this country as to what kind of sounds you utter and with what emotion you utter. You can manifest things in your life in the sense, if I say flower, the fragrance of flower becomes a living reality, actually it will happen. But those of you who are saying, shit, shit, You're doing this to yourself, just know this. In your mind, in your words, the sounds that you utter and sounds that you hear and what kind of atmospheres you are create for yourself and everybody around you, all these things are important. Oh, where is all this? Nobody told me this. What words you utter, what words you hear, sounds, what type of sounds do you utter? It's very important. If you utter it rightly, like I said, if you say, flower, fragrance should come because sound has that much power if you know how to use it. See, if you just want to go to work and come, work essentially means earn a living and come back, something. Then uh, with some broken down thing, you can drive there and come back or you can go on a bicycle and come back. Now suddenly you want to enter a racetrack, now every micro millimeter of the machine is looked at again and again and again, purified and purified. That's how it is. If you want this life to perform at its highest level, then everything, just everything, how you sit, how you stand, how you breathe, how you step, purification is needed, otherwise it will not function like that. When you're doing sadhana, it's important you eat something that doesn't stick into you, it must go. When it's done its job, not a speck of it should remain within you, it must be out. So how do you cleanse yourself? One simple thing is, at least twice a month, one day should go, twenty-four hour space must go without any ingestion of food, just water. This everybody here, our brahmacharis and many others here are doing this on every Ekadashi day. That is the best day also to do that. And twenty-four hours, that is today evening you eat and only next day evening you eat. You only drink water. If you're feeling very tired or whatever initially, after some time it'll be okay. If you're doing enough sadhana, it'll not be a problem. Otherwise, if you're feeling tired, a little bit of one lemon you can squeeze into it, maybe a spoon of honey, you can put into it, it'll keep you going. One, twice a month doing this and doing the regular practices, whatever you're doing, uh, will ensure body is clean, but the simplest way to arrive at cleanliness is to be in a blissful state. To be… Hello? I'm not asking you to do anything difficult, I'm asking you to do the easiest thing and the most wonderful thing to do. So, uh, this is a simple way because there is today, we don't need any scientific evidence, today's lab… lab science evidence, but today there is also lab science evidence that when you're joyful, when you're pleasant in experience, how bodily functions happen, 
in what way it functions, how chemically it becomes very clean. Because human experience is rooted in… in many ways in your chemistry. So if your chemistry is not clean, if it is getting contaminated by what you generate within you, then initially it's a question of unhappiness, later on it's a question of ill health and all kinds of suffering is happening. If you take care of this, how do I take care of this Sadhguru? Oh, in engineering, you know. <laughs> you thought now, uh, see it is like this, you first went to school, you learn A, B, C, D, all right? Rudimentary staff, your uh, kindergarten teacher. But then you became whatever, you became uh, B.Sc., M.Sc., a Ph.D. you became. <laughs> that will sound like a dead end, Ph.D. <laughs> <laughs> so you got there and then you look at your uh, kindergarten teacher, that woman looks like no good, she knows nothing, you know, A.B.C. Suppose you forgot what she taught you and then you do… How do you say PhD then? <laughs> so, <laughs> at different stages of life, different things will come. But it's very, very important, fundamentals are not lost, inner engineering. Psst, mother to the world, hmm? Hello? Forgot? No Sadhguru, I am Samyamo. You forgot A, B, C, there no PhD, isn't it? <laughs> it's the same thing. So, the five aspects of inner engineering, how to give yourself a crash course. If you need it once a day, give it once a day. If you need it twice, do it twice. If you need twenty-four times, do it twenty-four times. If you need it twenty-four thousand times, do it twenty-four thousand times. Remind yourself of the five fundamentals of inner engineering. This is a simple way of staying blissful.